Before Oatmeal could successfully calculate the trajectory, the first strike arrived, hitting his friend and wearer right in the stomach. The strength of this impact was largely unexpected. For a moment, the AI was trying to calculate the exact power of this certain attack, but everything had gone completely off the scale, causing it to marvel at just how much stronger this android was. The black-haired one. The boy. Although his twin sister seemed just as fierce. Oh, meal. Many cow. <laughs> Granola spit out some blood. Oh, sorry. I was just... Wait, it's pretty hard to... Another attack came in. Needless to say, Neither the Cerulean nor his trusty sidekick computer bot were expecting to be facing any sort of enemy in this format today. Through the corner of his eye, he could see that Vegeta was also struggling. Despite all his Super Saiyan bravado that he had exhibited ever since he got here, he seemed outmatched. Same went for Goku. They were fighting the onslaught, but it was pretty clear that those three were stronger, especially the big one. They very quickly noticed that he was going angrily for Goku and was not going to stop. I think a retreat is in order, Granola suggested to the group. <laughs> All right, Goku dodged one of the rocket punches in agreement. Retreat, a true Saiyan warrior doesn't know what to retreat. Vegeta screamed as the blonde one broke his arm. Krillin, hearing what Granola said, didn't need to be told twice, blinding the organic ones. So they started to fly away. Good thing, Krill Dog. Unfortunately, though, the mechanical one with the red hair was still in hot pursuit, him being unaffected by the solar flare. Trunks was holding a badly injured Vegeta, who was cursing and spinning around, lamenting his own failure. The humans seemed slightly panicked at the fact the Saiyans were no match. Any ideas on how to lose him? The Cerulean thought for a second. I don't know. A fly over a water basin. I might have an idea. As they flew away, they approached the open sea, with the android following in their stead. You know, aiming and flying is not that easy to pull off, Granola. Oatmeal lamented. Look, we don't need to be that precise, just trust me. Granola charged his finger blast and waited for the most opportune moment possible. Then, he found his moment. He shot at the water with a massive blast, causing an immense tidal wave to then head its way toward the android. Then he followed with a few quick key blasts to create even more mini waves. And some of the Z fighters saw what he was doing and quickly followed in his stead. That would not stop the opponent for long, but it was enough to stop the big android and confuse his sensors temporarily. The team used this moment to run away and live for another day taking them to a place called Kami's Lookout, where their guardian resided. Granola felt a heavy feeling in his stomach right away when he saw the guardian. He reminded him so much of his old friend, Paul Monaito. The guilt of leaving that man alone on cereal returned to him in waves. That and the way they parted ways the last time they were together, it was not good. He should probably check on him. But any message sent from here could be risky. He did not want to put Monaito in any sort of jeopardy. And as the heroes were gathering strength, Kami noticed that the Cerulean was looking at him very intently. Yes? May I help you? I'm sorry, Great Guardian. I'm just... You remind me of a Namekian that raised me. Were you raised on planet Namek? I don't recall many of us taking in strangers from other worlds. No, sire. I'm the lost survivor of my race, from uh, Planet Serial. Then how did you come in contact with a Namekian? Kami seemed intrigued, walking closer toward the Cerulean. Granola then took some time to explain his story to the elderly Namekian. It felt like taking a huge weight off of his chest. And at the same time, he could swear that the Guardian of Earth was really interested and intrigued by this mystery. I am very sorry you have to go through all of that, young one but it also warms my heart to know that there might be even more Namekians out there like me amongst the stars. As I said, there used to be more, many more. Now it's just me and Gramps. Well, from what I could see, he raised a brave and noble individual. Thanks, Great Guardian. That means a lot. Sorry to interrupt you guys. I'm glad you're becoming friends, but Kami, 
Do you think we're ready for the Room of Spirit in time? Room of what? Everyone present on the lookout was puzzled by this revelation. It turned out that the lookout had one more secret and surprise for them. A special room, which completely shocked Granola, as apparently said room could bend time itself. And as Goku and Kami were explaining this, one Earth year here corresponded to one day in that chamber. Apparently, you could train there too, though as the Saiyan was very keen to point out, it was incredibly taxing for the body and mind. You would be very lucky to come out of that in one piece in the head, and they could only do it in pairs. You would never do it alone, from my own personal experience. The first duet that decided to go in was Goku and Gohan, and as Vegeta was still getting back towards health and mental stability, nevertheless, he and Trunks called dibs on the second session. That would make Granola part of the third session. He wondered if Oatmeal counted as a second to go in, but maybe, maybe, he could ask Yamcha for assistance. Well, whatever would happen, Granola was very convinced that Goku's wife wouldn't really be entirely happy about bringing Gohan in there. From what Oatmeal could deduce, the Earth year was a very long period of time comparing with other galactic calendars, but it was a rather desperate time for everyone involved, so convention would have to be put to the wayside. And as the computer was pondering about that, he saw that Kami was talking with Piccolo. He could almost feel the tension between the two, like there was a big history between them. But then he noticed that the Guardian was worried about something else. He decided to approach. Can I aid somehow? Granola? Yes, I am sensing something else. Another power that doesn't seem to be that of the androids. Somebody should check it out. Piccolo looked at the Cerulean. What do you think? You're a bounty hunter. Care to join me on a scouting mission? What? Sure. I'll be on it. Piccolo nodded. All right, old man. We'll check it out for you. And then we'll resume the conversation. Yes. Yes, we shall. Kami's eyes narrowed. You two be careful. Three! I'll take care of them. Don't fret, Guardian. Oatmeal chirped happily, bringing a slight smile to the old Namekian. Granola and Piccolo then departed the lookout. If you don't mind me asking, what were you trying to talk about? Piccolo said nothing for a moment, deducing whether or not to tell the Cerulean. I'm considering trying to become one with them again, like we used to be. Granola then blinked twice. What? Is that even possible? Yes. There's a technique known amongst my people. I've already used it once. A dying warrior on planet Nemec called Nail sacrificed his life in order to grant me power to fight off the Galactic Emperor Frieza. I didn't end up doing all that much, but I was able to force Frieza into his third form. So I guess that counts for something. Granola scratched his nose. Well, that sounds uh, impressive. But what will happen after you fuse again? Will one of you be dominant, like with this Nail fellow? Or will you remain the dominant, or both of you be gone? I don't know. It might be different since we used to be one being, but I think it'll be worth it to protect this world, you know. Granola didn't say anything. He liked both the Namekians and had just gotten to know them. It would not be a good feeling to see something happen to them, and now potentially they could be both gone and then a new Namekian might be present. This uncertainty was not good. They didn't exchange any more words until they got to the destination that Kami had sent them toward. A place called Gingertown, and it was deserted. Granola felt extremely uncomfortable. While there wasn't much destruction, the clothes lying everywhere, no one around, the creepy silence, activated some flashbacks from Planet Serial he really did not want to be experiencing. Are you alright? Piccolo looked at him with mild concern. What? what? Oh, sorry, Piccolo. Just the memories hitting hard. This place just so familiar. What happened here? The Namekian looked around, trying to check out the rags laying down on the floor for any sort of a clue. Who were they dealing with? Somebody savage, clearly. I don't know. It seems like they've just disappeared. They then took some careful steps around the town, with Oatmeal scanning the remains. Um, I don't want to worry at all much, said the AI with a rather troubled tone. But I do find remnants of the body fluids in these. Ugh, that sounds gnarly. Well, what does that mean exactly? Like they were liquidated? Evaporated? And then... Uh... Oatmeal stopped 
as it registered some movement. Wait, there's someone alive back there. Hearing that, the Namekian and the Cerulean quickly moved toward the source of the ruckus. And indeed, there were two figures there, one carrying over the other, laying on the ground. They saw a rotund, balding man dressed in elegant clothes, waving money at the individual that was standing over them. Oatmeal didn't need to make an overly thorough scan for his operator to realize what was going on and that he was terrified of whoever was there dominating the elderly man. I mean, come on, you only just had to look at this person. It had a long barbed tail, was winged and green. It reminded Granola of some weird alien creature. Although, having said that, Granola hadn't seen anything like it. It was just the stuff you remembered from stories and trying to provide some rationale. Please, I will give you all the money I have. Just spare me. I'm the richest man in Gingertown. Please save me. The balding man was begging for his life. The monster then turned his head at them with a creepy smile. Leave him alone. Piccolo tried to sound threatening, but Granola sensed he wasn't entirely confident here. Surprisingly, the creature let the man go, giving them a brief moment of respite. And then, in a blink of an eye, hadn't let him free, stabbing the man with its tail and very graphically drinking him whole, as if he were some sort of trash that needed to be vacuumed up. It happened so quickly that it left them speechless. Moreover, this creature had a weird aura. They could feel Vegeta, Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, himself, and many other terrifying auras. Nice to see you stop by, Piccolo, and uh, oh, someone new. I don't recognize you. It quickly turned out that this blasted monster could talk. But what had shaken Granola to the core the most was the fact that he could not sense any vital areas in this thing. There were no apparent weak points. Oh, come on, boys. Say something. Why won't you introduce your new friend to me, Piccolo? I would like to know more. I hate being in the dark. How do you know my name? The Bugman chuckled. Well, not many Namekians left on this planet, you know. It's kind of not hard to guess. The other one's more wrinkly and, uh, you're not, as far as I know, and uh, besides, I have my own secrets. Piccolo then turned to Granola and nodded while the Bugman was waxing lyrical, and the two of them then decided there and then to charge at this new enemy. It was very strong and agile, and it was able to handle the two of them quite handily. Granola was lashed around with its tail, whilst the Namekian's arm was pierced by the barb at the end of said tail. The Cerulean could just look at how this thing had drunk one of Piccolo's arms dry, only to be then grabbed with that same tail again by his neck. You're a curious little creature. What are you? The future. The barb got dangerously close to Granola's face. Wait, it's clear that you outmatch us both. What are you? The being was moments away from crushing Granola's neck. But he could feel that this sentence had brought him some sense of excitement and power, as if it were waiting for someone to say that. No one's ever asked me that. Well, you see, I am the most advanced creation of my father, Dr. Jiro. My name is Cell, and I am an android. Another one? Granola was trying to catch his breath as the grip tightened, or at least he was pretending whilst Oatmeal was busy analysing the tail. Indeed, a biomechanical android created from the cells of the galaxy's most powerful warriors, Son Goku, Nappa, Vegeta, Frieza. F Frieza? The Cerulean paled. Yes, yes, that fear makes me feel so good. There wasn't a lot to scoop out since he was mostly a machine, but it was useful what they found. He started to slowly tighten his grip even more around Granola's neck. He then started to gleefully tell them that he was also from the future, and that it would easily solve their android problem. As in his timeline, someone had already taken his prize from him. That scared and confused the two warriors, but Piccolo knew that Oatmeal was up to something. 
so he let Sel talk and boast and gloat, as at that moment he hadn't seen any threat in any of them, which was a mistake. It was true that Granola could not see any vital areas that could kill the creature, but no one said anything about hurting or annoying the damn thing. As Oatmeal calculated everything, the Cerulean mustered strength in one of his arms, took all the power that he had left, and chopped off the tail, causing Cell to shriek loudly. When it had been severed, he got loose. Granola could catch that tail like a whip and lashed it at the monster with all of his strength and then throwing him into one of the buildings. Piccolo then used that opportunity to regenerate his withered arm and collapse the building on top of the beast. Run! I'm pretty sure he can regenerate as well! We gotta use this time wisely! Granola prompted his ally to fly away and so they did, leaving Furious Cell imprisoned under the rubble. He would get free eventually, but they had to regroup and get up to the lookout pronto. As they did so, Kami looked pale. Have you seen what's happened? I did. The Guardian wasn't happy about this. And? What are you going to do about it, Guardian? Piccolo was losing his patience. You are the Guardian of this damn planet! You know good and well what you should do! The younger of the two Namekians yelled further. Well, maybe if you acted like a good person, I would not hesitate as much! The old man retorted. Stop, both of you! You have to work together! It's not about you! It's about this planet! I know how it is to lose worlds to monsters and it sucks. If I could go back and fix it, I would do the same thing, even if I had to fuse with someone I had no clue about. They looked at each other, saying nothing, as they then realized everyone on the lookout was staring at them. Kami nodded, defeated. You, you are right, Granola. As are you, Piccolo. We have to do this, but we should use my body to be the dominant figure. That will give us a bigger advantage. Kami nodded sadly. It was an honor to meet all of you, friends. Send my regards to Goku, won't you? And you, Granola, take care of your grandfather. It's a shame that I will never get to meet him. The Cerulean just saluted in silence. As Piccolo placed his hand on his chest, Kami let out one last shriek, and then a Super Namekian was born. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.